Hey, welcome back. I got a little job in the Moore Jig Bore, and I'm going to show you what and how. And if uh, I don't break the tool at the end, I'll tell you why. Let's get moving on that. Okay. Get over here. Get you a bird's eye view of a wall hopter head and a more jig bore. And what we have here, this is the what, is an 8-inch three-jaw chuck. And it's got a problem fitting on the spindle of my Axelson lathe. The taper is a little bit uh, sloppy, the locating taper in the center. So I'm going to face this down three and a half thousandths of an inch in the jig bore with the wall hopter facing head. Okay. Now I can, uh, let me get the wrench here. So I can uh, position this thing, right, in, like this, with this, uh, this end, and uh, get it over there. And then for the feed, I'm going to give it a, a thousandths and a half feed. And I've got uh, this pin pushed in. i got this pin pushed in here. And I believe i got a pin back here. Yeah, I do. So each uh, pin is half a thousandth. So I kind of spread it around the ring there. And right, right here is a uh, star wheel in there. And it catches those pins and clicks over. This is like ancient stuff. But it's in a modern package and it looks great, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to get that pretty close. Got it ready. Got the depth. Oh, let me check. Three and a half thousandths. RPM is 205 RPM. I'm going to run it quite slow. We'll get it in gear. All right. Fire in the hole. Whoa. We'll see if it chatters or anything. I put some of my uh, lube on it, of course. Okay, it's starting to cut. Oh, that looks nice. Now, I have this rotary table dialed in to one ten thousandths. You know, I swept it on the edges. And I found there's an error in this check of nine ten thousandths. So I'm going to go by the front of the check and correct that um, on the check now. Cutting nicely. Now. If something should happen, and I break the tool, I'll have to make another one. <laughs> um, the tool, this Wally wall hopter head has 7 8 inch holes, and I make the tools out of 7 8 inch uh, hitch pins. And I grind on them and uh, brace in a piece of carbide. I think that makes it about $3 a tool. That's not too bad. Isn't that nice? Look at that. And that's like wave turning. It look, you know, it looks like a phonograph record, and it's really got some benefits. This is uh, this head is ideal for creating high pressure flanges because, uh, like, uh, same like a lathe, it's going to be slightly concave, and that's extremely important. And I can tell you why it does that. Okay, we're Wally and away. Isn't that sweet? 
This is a 5 inch wall hopter head in a more number 2 jig bore with good spindle bearings. And that's what it does. And we're almost at the end. Oh, I love it! Well, one of the advantages of this, if you think about it, uh, it, uh, it, it would do uh, not so good a job doing a fly cut on that. Um, this is an ideal surface. Okay. And it's also an ideal sur surface for a motorcycle cylinder head. <laughs> okay. Let's get around here. Okay, let's look at the head here. Let me get her in uh, neutral. How are we doing on doing that, man? Uh, look at that. I did a hundred bucks of work, worth of work in six minutes and uh, flapped my jaws at the same time. <laughs> that's called jig time. No, that's a great finish for that stuff. Just excellent. I, I can't complain on that. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is kind of a neat head. I'm going to get into it a little bit and show you a couple of things. Now, I push those pins in. I push this one here. Where is my... Now, this is a special tool. I had to make it because I didn't get nothing with it. Okay, and that goes in there, see? There's a little lever. It's kind of dark back here. But when I push that lever back, it uh, kicked the pins back out. So you can start all over again. You can actually stop the feed with this lever if you're like cutting a groove or back facing or doing something really fancy. So you can cut um, a snap ring groove down in a hole. So there's a lot of things you can do with the uh, wall hopter head. Now, it's uh, even if the pins are pushed in, you can still return the slide. Let me crank this up. Okay. Now, to set the depth on a more jig board, there's no spindle lock. So I use, you have to use the snail cam, uh, cam there, see that? And the stop. Okay. Now, they provided a vernier here, reads in thousands. But I got one of those, uh, that's a metatoyo thing that's common. Okay, it works. I couldn't afford uh, another slot DRO when I uh, got this machine many years ago. Okay, so it kind of sticks sometimes, so you jiggle it, and then you see you can return the slide. Now, this is a 5 amp head. And uh, it'll it'll uh, face from the center uh, to the edge of a 10-inch circle. But you can use extension bars and extend it way out. I'll show off some of that stuff later. Okay, so I did that facing job. Let's get on over here a little bit. Okay. Now, let's get look at this. Light. It's, it's like stormy outside. Can't, uh, this is, of course, a smaller um d13 but it's the same thing it uh it's got this locating taper here and uh when uh, i fit my trucks now see i make my own stuff for these because stuff's hard to get i completely fabricated this chuck the back plate d13 everything it's a just true 5c call it chuck and I copied it off a chuck uh, for a CNC machine that had uh, like a big flange, but this part's uh, the same. Made it out of 4140. It was actually a, a, a big water pump shaft. And uh, then this uh, 5C part here is just a, a 5C collet holder. They cost about 150 bucks. You can actually probably see the back of it in there. Okay, that's what I what I do. And the reason is you want these um the chucks to just fit snug on that taper. 
And uh, on the axle sun, the uh, I've got a 12 inch uh, direct mount um, a Cushman solid steel D16 chuck, and it fits perfect on that spindle. It can't complain at all. Now this uh, chuck I got in here, it fits loose, and I mean really pretty loose. And the way you check it, let's see where those are. Right here, I'm gonna show you everything. So here's the pins, right? You remove the pins from the chuck, and then put it up, put it up against the spindle. Use your tailstock and um, push it against the spindle, then put a board under it and lift it with an indicator on the top. And you can tell how sloppy this is. And this is sloppy. And I've got that Bison 12 inch chuck that came with the machine and it's sloppy. And I gotta do the same thing. And um, okay, so I showed you this part and uh, I'm going to get delve uh, very much into rebuilding uh, three jaw chucks. I've learned a lot of stuff in the field and I think you'll benefit from it because I do because I don't spend much money on chucks. So uh, I fix them. Okay, well, I'm going to load this video and maybe start another one here on this subject. Okay, bye.